you have your Bibles, open them. Open them with me to the book of 2 Kings. I want to go to 2 Kings chapter 4 for just a moment. Wow, it's great. 2 Kings chapter 4. I want to show you something today that I think is so important. It's so simple, and yet it does, it does teach us a Bible principle that our response to God is very, very important. I've heard people say that it's the preaching of the Word of God that's the most important thing in the service, and I understand what they're saying, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I think your response to the preaching of the Word is the most important thing because you can hear it, you can experience it, but if you don't respond, then it's, it's, it's not of no effect. And I want you to see in 2 Kings chapter 4 something that's pretty powerful. Verse 9, and she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Who passes by us, the King James says, constantly. In reference to Elisha the prophet. And how that he, through the power of God, could work mighty miracles, incredible miracles if you read about it. He was the one that had the double portion, you remember, anointing. And the woman said to her husband, I've noticed that, that this, the power of God in this vessel is walking by our house continually. And then if you read on, she said, let's make a room. Let's add on a room. I don't want him just to pass us by. I want to make room for the miraculous in my life. I want to make room for a miracle in my family. But notice that every day, on a regular basis, constantly, Elisha, who represents perhaps the Holy Spirit, the power of God, is constantly going by, but that doesn't mean just because it's passing by that it benefits you until you make room. And the Bible said when they added on a room and put a bed and a candle on a table that the prophet turned in and he stayed and dwelt there because they made room for a miracle. In Luke chapter 18 in verse 37, notice a pattern. Blind Bartimaeus was told by someone, Jesus is passing by. See it. Luke 19 and 1, Jesus entered and passed through. He was passing through Jericho. In Mark 6 and verse 40, they're in the storm. They're, they're, the winds are, are raging. And the Bible said the disciples are in the boat. They're toiling with and rowing. The wind was contrary and Jesus came walking on the sea. Listen to these words though. This is mind-boggling and would have pass them by. He would have passed them by. Highlight those four verse, those verses that I just read. And one says he's passing by. One said he's passing through. One says he would have passed them by. And the, and the second king said that he's passing by continually on a regular basis. But it's not enough to know that the Spirit of God is here today because he is. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he's here. But apparently, according to these scriptures, it's possible for God to pass by and it not benefit us if we don't make room for his presence. The Bible opens by telling us something about the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Early in the book of Genesis, it says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, the waters. Notice that the Spirit of God is moved. Scriptures as a, as a river that's constantly moving. The river is moving, which means in that river, the power, the provision, the promises of God are passing by and you and I are supposed to get in contact with that river. 
Don't just let it pass you by this morning. You know what you'll get out of this service? Exactly what your faith reaches out for. Because it's passing by. It's not an issue of whether or not he's here. The question is, will it do you any good? And we have the power to to, to stop the passing by, to make him stand still. Need does not obligate God to do a miracle. Just because you have a need. If you just stand by or sit by and watch the river pass by, you can miss all of God's provision and God's power. What makes him stand still? What makes him not pass us by? I believe it's desperation. I believe there's something about desperation that will stop him from passing by. Some people don't understand our passion in a church like this. They don't understand people shouting and people clapping and people praising. But some of us understand that it's not just God is, God is going to do whatever he wants to do. I know he's sovereign. I understand that theology. But the truth is, there's a reason why every one of these occasions he was just passing by, passing through, would have passed them by. That's about as plain as you can get. But they all did something. They cried out in desperation and Jesus changed what he was doing and where he was going because somebody accessed more than letting him pass by. And I'm saying to you this morning, we can through our desperation, through our faith, what, what, what makes him stop? It's, it's our faith. It's our honesty. It's getting real with God. It's doing more than playing church. It's doing more than watching the river. But it's getting in a place. It's a big crowd. People are everywhere. But somebody can stop Jesus from just passing by. And that's why we worship. You call it, some people call this energy. This isn't energy. This this, this, This is the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is worship. This is praise. This is calling on the name of Jesus. Because we're desperate to stop him from passing us by. There's a little man in the Bible by the name of Zacchaeus. He sought to see the Lord, but was unsuccessful. And the Bible said he saw a tree. He could have let the crowd keep him, but he saw a tree and climbed up in the tree because he was so short in stature that he was afraid as Jesus was passing by, he wouldn't see Jesus. So he climbed up in a tree. And the Bible said we all have sinned and we have come short of the glory of God. So what I'm saying to you is all of us are too small to see him. But I like this guy because he had a problem. He knew Jesus was passing by. He was too short. He couldn't see him. And so he said, my answer is not in me. My answer is in a tree. The tree, which represents Calvary, enlarged Zacchaeus. The tree caused him to see Jesus. And more importantly, the tree made Jesus see him. And when you get in the tree called Calvary, Jesus sees you. And then Jesus said, come down out of the tree because I'm going to your house today. He could have just passed by, but when he got in the tree, Jesus said, I'm not passing by. I'm going to your house and I'm going to bless your whole family. And I'm going to change the future of your family because you got in the tree. If you can get in Calvary's tree, he'll go home with you this morning. Depression won't go home with you. Defeat won't go home with you. If you'll get in the tree and say, Lord, it's not in me. I can't do anything, but it's in the tree. My answer is in the tree. Jesus will notice you. Blind Bartimaeus, the Bible said, was told Jesus is passing by. And he cried out with a loud voice, Son of David, have mercy on me. And some of the church junkies came to him and said, You need to calm down. And the Bible said he cried even louder. He cried the more with a loud voice. Listen to that. He cried louder. In other words, he got a miracle for crying out loud. Turn to your neighbor and say, You can get a miracle for crying out loud. Or you can miss a miracle for sitting there. Don't
Don't you minimize my praise. Don't you act like we're emotionally shallow because sometimes we feel a hallelujah down in our soul and we've been through hell all week long and we just raise our hands and we shout it out. You might be one hallelujah away from a miracle because when he shouted, the Bible said he got a miracle. Everybody take a praise break and lift your voice and thank God for a tree and thank God for mercy. Jesus, Jesus heard the cry for mercy. Have mercy. Joshua, under the old covenant, made the S-U-N, the sun, the physical sun in the sky, when he prayed, your Bible said he's fighting a battle, running out of daylight, and he looked in faith and said, Son, stand still, S-U-N, stand still. And the Bible said he stopped the, ro the whole universe from rotating <laughs> and finished his battle. But blind Bartimaeus didn't just make the S-U-N stand still. He made the one who made the sun stand still. He made the Son of God, the S-O-N, the Son of David, the Son of Jesus Christ, God, stand still. Oh, my goodness. You mean he's passing by? And if I cry out in faith, if I learn to worship and I learn to praise and I get desperate and I get in a place of faith that I can cry out, that I can make Jesus stand still. I know I, I, some of you have having problems with the theology of me. I don't care what you call it. The bottom line is in every one of these cases, Jesus was going somewhere else and he was stopped by somebody who cried out. Wow. The Bible said the disciples got in a boat. They went out on the Sea of Galilee, got in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, way committed. And all of a sudden, a storm comes. And I love what your Bible said. It said, and Jesus was on the land, on the shore, but he saw them in the storm. When you can't see Jesus because of the storm, he can see you. Somebody needs to hear that today. Have you ever desperately needed to see him and you can't see him because there's so much going on around you, but when you can't see him, he can see you. You're never in a valley so deep that Jesus can't see you. You're never in a trial so great that Jesus can't see you. You feel overwhelmed by the storm. You feel conquered by the contrary winds. But Jesus has his eyes upon you this morning. And what gets me about this story is Jesus, the Bible said they were toiling and they were laboring, toiling with those oars, trying to go and they couldn't get anywhere. They couldn't move anywhere. The waves were overcoming them and filling the boat and they were about to drown and die. And Jesus came walking on what they were warring. Jesus came walking on what they were worrying with. Jesus was walking on it. He was walking on your problems. He's walking on your negative circumstance. He's walking on what you're warring and toiling with. He's walking on it. I'm going to say something big right here. What you're worried about is what's going to bring him to you. Because he's walking on it. But the obvious does not obligate God. Listen, if you want to sum this whole message up, that's it in that line. The obvious does not obligate God. You would think if Jesus saw them, and even when he healed blind Bartimaeus, before he healed him, he said, what do you want me to do? Oh, well, it's obvious. I'm blind. Oh, heal, heal my toenail. No, I'm blind. But have you, here's a principle. The obvious does not obligate God. Faith is what moves God. Desperation, people crying out in faith is what moves God. Jesus said to the blind man, blind Bartimaeus, 
What do you want me to do for you? And he said that I might receive my sight and he got it. But it was obvious, but obvious doesn't obligate God. Same thing in this story. So there they are in the storm. They're drowning, about to go under. And Jesus comes walking on the water in the part of this story that blows my mind. And it says, and he would have passed them by. Because the obvious does not obligate God to meet your need. He would have, I mean, fully knowing they're going to drown. The whole Bible plan is going to go under the water. The big book, the Bible's in those guys. It's going to go under the water. And he would have passed them by if somebody hadn't cried out and said, help. Until, until we understand that danger and despair is not why Jesus did it. He did it because somebody cried out. And the Bible said when somebody cried out that the wind, Jesus walked on the water to the boat and the wind ceased. The word cease means to no longer exist. The problem that existed when Jesus was passing by and they made room for him and cried out to him and got him where their need was, the Bible said the wind ceased. It was no longer in existence. They were toiling with that and all of a sudden, instantly, it was gone. What happened to the wind? Wouldn't it be something today if you left this service saying, what happened to the disease? What happened to the depression? What happened to my sin? What happened to who I was? What happened to my addiction? What happened? See, we need to get back to Bible preaching because I believe Jesus can take somebody today and the old things can pass away and all things become new. And you can leave here saying, what happened to who I used to be? I'm not that person anymore. I've been born again. What happened to our marriage? What happened? Can you imagine them tolling and instantly it ceased? It's like uh, you ever played tug of war? You ever, you ever got a rope and tied a flag in the middle and got one team on one side and one team? And you, but then this team says, let's just let act like it and in a minute just let the rope go. I think that's how they were. They were out in that boat. I could see them tolling, tolling, tolling. And, and all of a sudden, it all ceased. And it's like, whoa, what happened? Do you know that we serve a God that can do that this morning? Where did, where did it go? Where did my sin go? I dare you to turn to somebody beside you and say, will you help me? Come on, tell them. Say, will you help me? I'm desperate. I want to make room for a miracle. This can be another Sunday morning, another service, another church, and Jesus is passing by. Or these buildings can become a building like that woman when she said he's passing by continually, but I'm not content with him just passing by. I want to make room for him. And when she made room for him, the Bible said the prophet turned in. And one day she needed it because when her son died, the Bible said that he took that boy and put him in his bed. Wow. In the room that she made and raised him from the dead. Build him a room this morning, a room of faith, a room of praise, a room of desperation, a room of crying out, a room of seeking God. I need a touch. I need God to move. I don't need another church service where, where, where I know God's passing by. I need him to come home with me and I'm gonna get in the tree. I know I don't deserve it, so I'm going to, to the tree. And it's not in me, it's in the tree. And if I'm in the tree, Jesus can't ignore me because there's a covenant he made in that tree. And today, I believe that this can be one of those services where things will never be the same again for somebody's life. 
throw your hands up at every campus. And for the next 30 seconds, I don't care what anybody thinks. Open up your mouth and cry out to God if you want more than a pass-by. You want more than a drive-by. You want more than knowing that Jesus is real. But you need to make room for your... My body is the room or the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now in your temple, make room for His power, not just the pass-by. The Bible said, and Jesus stood still. He stood still when blind Bartimaeus cried out. Jesus, wouldn't it be something if he stood still at every one of our campuses? There's nothing God can't do when people believe in faith. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's time for some things to cease. To no longer exist hallelujah stand to your feet at every every one of our campuses right now hallelujah I said hallelujah the Bible said he inhabits the praise of his people so if you're in a rush to get out of here, you need to just remember we're not through with this service I want you to throw both your hands up in the air I want you to forget about everybody around you and I want you to create room for him to work, room for him to touch you. Open your mouth, open your mouth and fill it with a praise phrase. Everybody in this room, get a praise phrase. Hallelujah, glory, thank you, Jesus. I need more than a pass by today. I need you to come home with me. I need you to come in here. We need your touch. We need something. God, today, somebody's desperate. Somebody today needs more than another church service. Somebody today is hungry. Somebody today is saying, Lord, I really, really, really need a fresh touch today. Send your anointing to my house. Just get in the tree. You get in the tree and Jesus can't pass you by. Don't stand in your own, well, I've been good and I deserve it. No, you don't. Just get in the cross. Get in the cross and, it, and it'll come because of the cross because worthy is the lamb. He'll go home with you. He'll go home with you. Just bow your heads one moment. At every campus, if you're in this room and you'd say, Pastor, I'm desperate. I need to get right with God. I know I'm far from God and I want to get right with God this morning. Pray for me. If that's you, right where you are, without hesitation, without negotiating your way out of it, just obey God. I can't call you down front because we're about to pray for our kids. But everybody in this room and in every campus that we have that wants to make room for Jesus in your family, in your life, in your heart, in your body, he'll take you just like you are. But you gotta invite him. You gotta make room just like that woman did. You gotta make room. This is your moment. And all you gotta do to make room is say, I need him. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand high right where you're standing. I need to make room for Jesus this morning. This is phenomenal. I'm telling you, there's so many hands raised. I'm not right with God, but I want to get right with God. I'm not right with God, but I'll, that's what you're saying when you raise your hand. Raise it high and unashamed. There are so many hands here in Gainesville. I'm sure it's happening everywhere. This is pretty amazing, really. It's beautiful. Oh, all the way up in the top balcony, in the overflows, wherever you are, pray this prayer. Everybody say these words out loud. Lord Jesus, I make room for you in my heart. I, I, I know I can't change me. I know that I don't have the answer. The answer is not in me. The answer is in the tree. A place called Calvary. A man named Jesus. I believe his blood cleanses me. It's healing me. It's going to go home with me. I receive today an instant change. The wind ceases. Some things no longer exist that used to exist because I am born again. Come on, say it. I am born again. I am a new creation and I receive new life in Jesus' mighty name. Now, would you do something? Would you lift up your voice and would you praise God as they come? We're gonna lay hands on students, on teachers, on coaches 
on homeschoolers, on parents who are dealing with homeschoolers, and we're gonna bless our kids, and we're making room for God in 2016-17 school year to do mighty things in their life. Agree with us. Don't stand here and watch them worship. Worship with them. Come on out, guys, and let's lead them.